morning, good morning. Welcome to Wednesdays on the Daily Huddle. Um, I have something to share with you all, especially since we're going to be talking a little bit about leadership. Well, a gentleman who works for me, I'm not so sure he's going to make it. He keeps getting sick during the week. But <laughs> it's always during the week. And I finally sat down with him. I said, why are you only sick and out during the week? And he said, I think it's my weekend immune system. <laughs> Oh boy. so many levels. I love it. Here we are. Good morning. It is Wednesday on the Daily Huddle, where we talk everything communication and relationships. And today we have a guest who is going to dive deep into how we live without regret, which affects our relationships. I'm so excited. Um, but before we dive into our guest, Dr. Robert Hackman, with my co-host, Catherine Sable, I have a few questions to get us really here and present and in the now. And I am going to start with my new and treasured friend, Tom Montgomery. Tom, tell me, how are you and what are you grateful for this morning? You know, Tara, I am the way that I say I am, and I'm excited to be here, and I am grateful for this sharing and this, and this growth. Uh, really quite special. Thank you. Oh, I feel that. Thank you for sharing that. Good morning, Andrea. I haven't been able to speak to you directly in quite some time. Please tell me, tell me, where are you and who will you hug today? I am right where I need to be, Tara, here. And I'm going to hug my boyfriend, which is funny. I keep repeating that, but we've been working together. So we're going to be doing some training. I'm going to be hugging more today. So that's what I'm going to do. Oh. Fantastic. I love hearing that. Thank you for sharing. You. And then to really get us right here and nowhere else, Sorrel, just tell us, what time is it? <laughs> it's now. That's it. It's now. <laughs> That's it. And now is the time to turn this conversation over <laughs> to my lovely friend and co-host, Catherine Sable. Thank you, Tara. Yeah, I'm excited today. It's Wednesday where we talk about everything relationship and communications because Tara and I are passionate about this. We know that better communication breeds better relationships and better communities, better friends. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. We're going to dive in. We've got Robert Hackman with us today. Um, we've got a great conversation. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him before we dive into our question. So Robert provides leadership and team development to individuals and teams and organizations through executive coaching, strategy consulting, facilitation, and training. His specialties are legacy mindsets, managing change, diversity, and inclusion, and reimagining men's leadership. Robert works with successful individuals, teams, and companies that want to become even better. He's been an active member of Men Mentoring Men, a nonprofit secular men's support group for more than 20 years. I think you'll find this about him today. He's a serious man with a dry sense of humor who loves absurdity and can often be found hiking rocky elevations or making music playlists. Welcome, Robert. So glad to have you with us today. Thanks, Catherine. I'm excited. Yay. So our question today, how to lead, lead a life with fewer regrets? I don't know how this could be more relevant. I've never met a single person who, ah, oh, no, I'm good. A few more regrets, please send them my way. I'm good. Like, you know, there's such a cost to living with regrets. So you've got a couple of answers to this, a couple of different things that you like to focus on when you're talking to your clients about living with fewer regrets. Talk to us about those and what those are. Well, it's so funny to me to listen to you. We, you know, we spoke a little bit yesterday and I've never understood, you know, no regrets. Like, it's just like, what? Like, I mean, I, I have a laundry list of regrets, um, you know, think do overs that I would, uh, I would love to, um, you know, uh, have change, change my way. So th this also, you know, I know the daily huddle came about during the pandemic and, and the shift in my focus came about during the 
the pandemic. And uh, the purpose of my company is how to live and lead with fewer regrets. And it really got me focused on legacy and thinking about legacy. And I, uh, and I think about legacy in, in two ways. Uh, one is everyday legacies. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the impact that we have on others and the environment, and it's what we leave behind. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, I've conducted a bunch of interviews on legacy, and one of the women I interviewed was divorced, no kids, and she says, legacy is not for me. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> legacy is for everyone, you know, and it's for everyone in the now, you know, as Sorrel was saying, you know, it's right now. And, you know, it, it, again, I think, Lots of people, um, in my experience, kind of live life almost as if they're going to get another chance. And and that's not the way it goes. So how do you define everyday legacy? Because when we talked yesterday, the phrase that keeps coming to me is living legacy. Like, how do you define everyday legacy? Yeah, so it's 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 each interaction that we have. Uh, Again, we are making an impact. I, I think about and look, I've been guilty of these things sometimes. If you go to a coffee shop or something like that, maybe I'm on my phone and, and I'm, I'm, the person in front of me is invisible. And I'm really diminishing that person by not acknowledging them and, and being part of them. So I've been much more conscious of each and every interaction, even if I'm passing somebody on the street, making sure I say hello, giving them a smile. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, we are always having um, an impact on others. And my belief is that those impacts ripple out. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, is somebody uh, going home and, and yelling at, at uh, their, their child or their wife because of a, an interaction with me, or, or are they going home and giving somebody a hug, as Andrew, Andrea was talking about? Right. Um, well, it's interesting, too, because right before we got on, we were talking about, you know, CTI and leadership and leadership development. And one of the things that we say in that program is we're always having an impact. Is it the impact you want to have? Yes. And um, in, the, in that same vein, we do a lot of life purpose work in the training that you and I've come up through. And it's interesting because I was thinking about this this morning and there's someone in um, the organization that I work with who her life purpose is to have a positive impact on everyone she meets. And that struck me when I first heard that. It's exactly what you're talking about. I've never thought of that at that point. It's more, you know, I'm thinking about how am I going through my day and what am I doing? But for someone to be so focused on having a positive impact on everyone they meet is exactly what you're describing. Yeah, yes. And just acknowledging another person, Mm -hmm. you know, we we were talking about, you know, listening and so forth earlier. Um, But the, and and it's, it's the environment and then it's what we, what we leave behind. We're constantly leaving a trail. And, and again, in my interviews with people, what I, found is that is that people you know I, I said well when's the first time you've thought about legacy and most of the people said uh right now with you bringing it up you know you you uh me choosing to to be interviewed for this wow. and then I say you know what what's level of importance is legacy to you and for most people it was really low and it didn't matter the age um people in their 80s really low and actually there was a a guy that I interviewed that was in his 20s that had it rated very highly. And, hmm. and he had done some spiritual work, I think, earlier in his life and actually lost his father suddenly when, when uh, he was young. And he was super focused on legacy from an early, early age. And I think that if, if people do pay attention, right, if they can bring that onto their radar, they have a much better chance of living the lives they want and leaving the legacies they intend. And I think that that's what we all want, right? We all want significance. We all want to make a difference. We all want to matter. And yet, you know, it's, it's uh, I think Michael Jordan might have said this, you know, we, everybody wants to win, but only certain people have the will to prepare to win. And bringing legacy on brings a different level of responsibility, I think, for people, a different level of import. And right. it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you know shoulder to the grindstone. Oh, I have to be this serious person. You know, there, you can you know laughter, fun is a fabulous legacy, right? Really important component and play. Um, and it does mean that that you know kind of everything we do uh, has an effect. Well, that that's the key because you said something really interesting um, when we were preparing for this. Is you said that a lot of people want to cherry pick their legacy from their behaviors or interactions. They want to look at the most positive things they've done and say, well, that's my legacy. 
And you said that's actually a fake out because no, your legacy, you can't be super engaging and, you know, make a lot of people feel positive and go home and treat your family a certain way. That's all part of your legacy. And that struck me as, oh, wow. Okay. I have to be present all the time, you know, yeah, well, we're aware. Yeah. Yes. Well, and it's so funny. Oftentimes people think about legacy in the future, you know, it's some distant concept or whatever, as opposed to being in the now. And this is something, you know, by by natural law, our legacies are an accumulation of everything we we do and have done. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't know how it can be any other way. And yet a lot of, you know, you look at some of the um, the Carnegie's and so forth and things like that, that did a lot to kind of really polish their legacies at the end and make them something uh, entirely different. And, and that's not the way it is. Right. And that is my term, you know, fake, it's a fake out and, and uh, you know, pretending doesn't help us. Yeah. You know, so, so the flip of everyday legacies, or at least a, 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 something that I think actually is very complimentary is getting focused on what's most important. Right. So you mentioned purpose, which is a huge, uh, huge aspect of that. If people can kind of get honed in on what their purpose is, man, they have such a, a better chance of living some a life that's really fulfilling. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the other side of that is is values, right? Because it's not only what we do, it's how we do it. You know, it's the same thing in communication. I mean, we can say the same thing depending on the tone or our body language or something like that. The meaning is totally different. And um, so the the values piece is really important, and the and the I, I work with organizations and use a bunch of different tools, but the one that I've really focused on most recently is Brene Brown's question, which I found absolutely riveting, uh, which is, "What two values make all your other values possible?" And I'm telling you, you know. Like if somebody had said, Rob, we're going to have to kill you or we'll give you nirvana, uh, just give us your two values, I would have thought, no way. I can't, I can't shrink it down that far. Like getting to five would be the best I can do. And then her question, and she has a whole list of, of possible answers, and then you, know, you can fill in your own. And as soon as I went through it, 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 was, uh, it was obvious to me. I'm not sure that that would be true for everybody, but it was obvious to me right from the get-go exactly what they were and it, it was incredibly funny to me because <laughs> they were courage and curiosity and the name of my company 4c is courageously curious consulting and coaching and i thought oh ah, okay you know, hello. Well, you were more and, connected than you realized well yeah and knowing it at a really conscious level makes a big difference right there are lots of things right. You know, 90% of what happens with us, we, we, we go around thinking it's otherwise, but 90% of what happens with us is below our level of consciousness. So yeah. the more but, we can feed that, the better we are. Yeah. And that's a fascinating question. Um, I want to dive into it a little bit and then want to loop back to how does this all let us leave with, live with fewer regrets, but how, what it, say more about the, our top two values that make the others possible. Just give us a little more context around that. Yeah, so my, my belief is that uh, the key to all these things, you know, we, we talk about figuring out what's most important to us. Uh, and it's really important that 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 list be really small, because mm -hmm. we need to remember those things in the moments that we need to remember them. And, and if it's three or five things, you know, that's too many, there, there's all kinds of organizational uh, studies that say, if you choose one thing to focus on, you're so much more likely to uh, achieve it mm -hmm. than even two. And if you get to three, now all of a sudden all bets are off. So it, it's, um, it really, you know, it, it forces you force me and, I, and I've worked with other organizations and, and, and teams and individuals, and it has the same effect. It, it is a distilling effect and you have, you know, you're, you, it's almost like uh, whittling down to like the last people on earth or something. What, yeah. what is really needed um, yeah. And I'm not so focused on the two, because I understand, like, I think that would be hard. I'm more curious about, like, how does that make the others possible? How does curio curiosity and cor courage make all your other values possible? Oh, OK. Well, so I'll, I'll, I'll take curiosity first. So I, I can be a very judgmental person. And what I have determined uh, for myself 
is that I cannot be judgmental and curious at the same time. Uh -huh. And judgment has me look backward, which is not helpful. Mm -hmm. And curiosity keeps me in the moment and mm -hmm. keeps uh, me in a position where I can expand possibilities. And, and, you know, you're talking about relationship. If I could be curious in a relationship, man, that is rather than judgmental or rather than attributing things to people that may or may not be true, that, that keeps me in a really positive place. Um, and that opens up, again, I, I, I'm not looking at her list, but that opens up everything else. I see. And, it actually unlocks because when you're in judgment, you shrink to all these other places. Like you just can't open to all these other things. That makes a lot of sense how curiosity could unlock so much more potential for you and how you really want to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and, and encourage. So you know, I, don't, I don't like saying this. And as a man, this is like the last thing we want to say. But I'm, you know, I have a lot of fears. Right. And um, that's the way it is. Right. If I'm if I'm being honest and. That also means that I have a lot of courage because I'm not shrinking up. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you yeah. <laughs> on a live program, which, you know, I don't do with, with frequency. Uh, you know, I write articles almost every week, um, which are for me, to me are vulnerable. Um, and I used to think that, that courage was the absence of fear. And that's not true, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need courage unless you are afraid. And then courage keeps you in the game, keeps you coming back, keeps the persistence going. And again, that to me, and, and oftentimes courage is not uh, in a bravado way. I mean, there are lots of things that I think lots of people are doing things that, that our society looks at or culture and says, oh, you know, they're so brave. And they may be really afraid and, and in many other ways. So vulnerability, again, bring, brings us back to Brene Brown, vulnerability is a courageous thing. And, and one of the things I really focus on with companies and individuals and teams that wanna get better is getting into a safe place. And, and I think we, we don't recognize how unsafe many of the organizations or environments uh, are that we're in. Mm -hmm. And vulnerability is the key. Vulnerability is how we get to trust. It's not trust first. It's you say something that's vulnerable to me, I pick up on that. I say something that's a little bit vulnerable for you. Now we get into a virtual spiral of vulnerability, which builds a high level of trust. Now, all of a sudden, all things are possible, right? We can innovate, we can collaborate. We're not, um, we're not competing with one another. And, yeah. and you know, people can, can think that safety means, you know, everybody gets a cushy ride and it, it's not the way it is. It's actually... People are able to be much more candid uh, when that's the case. Yeah. Uh, oh, God, so beautifully spoken about vulnerability and how that can play into, and then communication and relationships and what that can unlock for us. And I, I want to open it up to questions because this is so, God, it's so good. It's so juicy what you're saying. And just give us a little bit about, you've talked about the living leg legacy and the purpose and the values and link it specifically to how you live with fewer regrets when you're focused on either one of these things or both of them together. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, I think it is, I think it is both together. So it's, it's, it, it is trying to be conscious. Uh, and I think um, self uh, compassion mm -hmm. is, is huge in this, right? Because there are lots of things that we do things that we're not so proud of or aren't, aren't our best. And so being self-compassionate and being self-compassionate helps us be more compassionate with others. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, right? But if you don't have self-compassion, again, that's the curiosity piece that comes in that that takes us away from judgment. Um, and if we can settle on what what our purpose is, and to me, our purpose, if we're really doing it right, there are lots of commonalities, right? So relationships are are key, the quality of our relationships, and they're really unique in many ways. Um, they're very specific. Uh, to people. And, you know, so me getting the legacy, I mean, I'm talking about legacy and most people aren't talking about it. And to me, like, I don't think anything can be more important than helping people live and lead with fewer regrets. Like, isn't that what we all want? Yeah. And yet that's not what people are thinking about. Right. Right. That's beautiful. Um, well, we're going to move to questions in just a minute. I want to bring Tara in. Um, I always love hearing Terry's thoughts. I know she's got some on this. So why don't you join us, Tara, and let us know what you're thinking and questions for Robert. 
Thank you. I, I love this conversation more than I can express. I have a bunch of questions, but I think I'm going to stick to the topic and dive a little bit deeper into the uh, regret mindset. I don't know if you've been studying, as I have, uh, Dan Pink's book on the power of regret. And um, I think it's his most recent book. And I, it, it takes me back to a conversation that I had with my mother. Um, she's gone now, but this was years and years ago. And we were talking about things in my past that have affected my children. And she started saying to me, you know, you can't, you can't live in guilt, Tara. And I, I looked at my mom and I said, I don't have guilt because I know my values, which is what you were expressing, but I do have regret. And I think those are very different. So when you're talking about not living with regret, but you're also talking about being courageous, I feel like if we're going to be courageous, we're going to look back and say, okay, that was a poor choice. That was a poor decision. Maybe I could have done it differently. Are those regrets or are those learning opportunities? Well, I, th I think they can be both. And, and actually, Dan Pink, so I'm, I talk about living with fewer regrets as being the goal. And Dan Pink would suggest, you know, hey, regrets can be really helpful because they're guiding mechanisms, right? And we can go back and say, well, this is how I behaved or this is a decision that I made or I didn't speak up here and I, and I really felt like I should have, right? That, that that becomes a corrective mechanism, just like guilt can be, right? Which is very different than shame. Shame just like is a, is a shutdown and is, is something's the matter with me that can't be changed. Mm -hmm. And guilt is, again, can be very uh, corrective. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, a good friend of mine, um, Tom Werder, who, you know, how free do you want to be is his question. And again, if the more honest we can be, the more vulnerable and, and, you know, vulnerability is, you know, there are people that say vulnerability is the, la is the last place anybody wants to be because it literally, it means open to being hurt. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, th there, there is something really courageous about being vulnerable and putting yourself out there in a way and opening yourself to the possibility of relationship to another. And, and, you know, so I'm in this, this, uh, class last night or this workshop on listening. And, you know, I had to say, I can be an inattentive listener. You know, I'm not proud of that. And the more I can acknowledge that, um, and it's, it's not that I admitted that right away. Mm -hmm. I, I resisted it until my wife and my kids are like, you know, sometimes you can be, you know, and I can be a tremendous listener as well. And at the same time, I need to own it all, right? Is that fair? I don't know yeah. if I answered your, hopefully I answered your question. Yes, and, I, and just thank you for bringing vulnerability to this conversation. Um, to say I can be an inattentive listener um, is vulnerable, and can't we all? I mean, I, I I find myself getting distracted all the time. I keep working at it, but I I think it's just part of our continual growth. So I thank you for that reminder. Yeah. It is. It's it's beautiful to see it modeled so well. To say these are the things, and then also to own them and you know, to keep moving forward and know that that's part of your journey. Um, that's great. So who else has any questions for, yeah, we've got two people raising their hands. That's great. Sorrel, what have you got for us today and for Robert? Uh, first of all, Robert, thank you for being here. You know, this is one of those mornings when I'm, uh, I say to myself, I'll be forever grateful for a bad idea called the daily huddle. So thank you. Thanks for your, for your idea, the daily huddle. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, and it's Giovanni's idea and all of yours too and I want to share what I'm taking away um, you talk about living as opposed to leaving a legacy and uh, I'm just so fond of that distinction so I'm struggling with for me to leave live as opposed to leave a legacy I, I must be in the moment. It's, it's as if you said the accumulation of my entire life is my legacy. So to be present to how I'm living my life gives me an access to uh, something beyond the default legacy that I think everyone has and I, that I've ignored for a long time to now being present to that, oh, I can actually invent my legacy as I go. 
and not wait until sometime later for me to look really far back and say, oh my God, I, I regret this. But to be looking in every moment and, and I'm thinking that what that gives me access to do as well is to actually complete my regrets moment by moment. Like I, I don't have to be looking at my regrets way back. I could be looking at regrets uh, seconds ago or minutes ago or days ago. So there is an active aspect to living a legacy rather than leaving a legacy that I'm taking away that I'm really grateful for. So thank you. Th thanks so much. And I, and I always think it's both. And I do what you're pointing to. And I, I you know, I listen to people and, and you know, I don't have time to work on my legacy right now. What, what do you mean? You know, like, and if you wait to your 60 or 70, first of all, we don't know if we're going to get there. And second of all, um, it's too late, right? We, we've already, because so much of our opportunity to actually live our legacy, to your point, Sarl, is, is past. And so I, re I really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Sarl. I'm hearing it's like static versus active. You know, it's something that's just, and I love that, the presence and being present in the moment. Thank you. Tom. Oh, Robert, thank you. This is, this is really insightful, really helpful. I was starting to block time on my calendar for this afternoon to work on my legacy, but I realized that's not what you're, what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, towards the start of it, you were, uh, touche. You were uh, a lot of people give you the reaction of uh, that aha moment of, hey, I, I, can, I, I should be mindful of it and work on it every day. And so then I, I guess my question for you then is for those people who are then deciding to then embrace, you know, living the legacy, you know, determine your purpose, identify your top two values, but what else would you recommend? I imagine internally, there's probably habits that work well, you know, to ground you each day, or maybe there's even external things, you know, to your family and friends to alert them of, of what you're trying to do. I'm, I'm just curious what you would further recommend for people making that transition? Yeah, and I, it's a great question, uh, Tom, and I thank you. I, I, I try not to be prescriptive, and at the same time, I do think that there's a, there are reflections, right? However people choose to do that. If, you know, I guess there's the, the expression that life can only be lived forward, but it can only be understood in retrospect. And I think it's really important to, to take time, right? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big believer that slowing down right? Getting, getting clear, right? What is my purpose? What are my values? I would also add in kind of what's my approach. We're in an organization. What's my strategy, right? A single strategy. Uh, that provides a lens to look at things and helps you make decisions that are aligned, right? That's one of the keys with being intentional about your legacy, because now you're making decisions that are aligned, which can then compound on one another, right? Like compound interest and your benefit goes up like this. Uh, if you're if you're not intentional, if you don't have that that binding element, then you, you you're 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 only getting there by accident, right? You, you know the um, and you know life continues to move at an incredibly rapid rate, and the best way for me and that when I work with companies is figure out what doesn't change, what is subject or what's subject to little change, and then that is such a barometer it's such a, a, a grounding mechanism um, and it and it it can lead to I think given living with much more integrity which invites trust and and uh, reliability and things like that and what a benefit to relationships those are so you know wh whether whatever the mechanism is whether it's it's journaling or or making sure you have conversations it's we were talking about hugs or Andrea I think brought in hugs and I wrote an article couple of weeks ago about the marvel of hugs and the uh, I'm a big hugger and the benefits of hugging they they actually say it needs to be for at least five to ten seconds to confer these benefits but the health benefits mental spiritual and and physical are huge mm. and and I actually uh, am a believer that that and maybe I'm biased here but oftentimes men might be under hugged because I'm a believer that men should hug other men, right? It's one of the things we do in the men's group. And it's a way of, of communicating things that, that we really can't communicate 
verbally, right? Because words are, are limiting. Um, well, thank you. So thank it, you so much. Thank you. Again, it's it's figuring out what's most, and the, the reason I think the personal piece is so challenging is we all, we're, we're tribal. We all want to fit in. And, and if people really lived uh, what was most important to them, we would be different. We would be, you know, dancing like nobody was looking or, or, you know, acting in ways that were very different. And I actually think the world would be much better place if that were the case. Wow. Because there are lots of limitations that we place on ourselves. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, Cicerel has, uh, we're a little bit over, but we can take one more. From God, I, I hate to take yes. you over time, but this is so good. I know it's important for Cyril to take us over time. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I just got in, in you answering uh, Tom's question, is that my legacy isn't a set of results or accomplishment that I leave behind as benefits to people. My legacy could be, as in the clarification of your two values, right? Curiosity and courage. Perhaps my legacy is my living true to my purpose. Wow. And what it does leave behind is a world that's a little more curious, a little more courageous. And for me, it's integrity and, uh, and compassion. And like, wow, I could leave a world that's a little more compassionate and a little more integrous. And you know, results will happen out of me living that life. So thank you. Well, yeah, so thank you. And I and I need to respond to that, or I feel compelled to respond to that because again, that's one of the questions I ask in my interviews is are, are legacies best defined by inputs or outputs, right? Outputs being results. And there are people on either side, and then there are some people that want both but it's probably 25%. And those, those 25% on either side feel very strongly, right? Some people are like, no, 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 it's only results. And then, you know, then I have to wonder, well, what's the time frame, right? Because Van Gogh was considered a, an abject failure, right? And, you know, died tragically. And then his output was absolutely fabulous, right? And then there are other people, and I, I'm more on the first camp, which is, it's really about the inputs. It's what's our intention? What are we trying to do? because we don't really control the outputs. I mean, it, you think about relationships, we only control, to the extent that we control anything, we only control a piece of them. And it's really, are we staying at it? Or are we, do we have the tenacity to stay with our purpose? Do we have the tenacity to keep revisiting our values and to, and to keep realigning? It's, it's, a, it's a dynamic process, right? We, keep, we have to keep coming back. The last thing I'll, I'll say on this is, you know, uh, uh, they say a, um, the automatic pilot on an airplane is only directly moving to its target 5% of the time. And I think that that's very apt for us, right? We're constantly tacking back and forth and trying to, trying to stay back, you know, come back to what's most important. And there are lots of things that want to take us away from that, right? It's lots of life that get, wants to get in the way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you all for staying the extra minutes and for taking us there. This is I feel like we could go on with this and what you're saying. There's so many nuggets of wisdom and gold in here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Robert. Um, what a delightful conversation. I've got so much to take away. We're going to close out with our seven tenants like we normally do. And it's really apt for today because this, if you leave this legacy behind, I don't, I mean, I don't, yeah, what could be better? Love, love with your whole heart, laugh out loud. We've talked about joy and fun. It's one I always need to work on more. Stress less. When you laugh more, you stress less. Eat more plants. That leaves a great legacy for the earth and our children and the planet behind us. Give of your time, your resources, your heart, your love. Sleep. And, you know, I say all the six just to get to the seventh because it's my favorite. Here we go. All right. Move that body. Move what your mama gave you and what <laughs> we have. Move it or lose it, right? <laughs> See you all tomorrow. Thank you so much, Thank everybody. Thank you, Robert. Thank this you so much. Fantastic. Oh, thank you, Robert. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Thank you so much.